Hello everybody. Next off the pile is the Stanley number 84 cabinet maker scraper plane. Let's take a look at it. The number 84 is an uncommon plane. Both the knob and the tote tilt from left to right. It was designed for cabinet makers and the tilting allowed them to get into corners where other scrapers might be harder to use. Not a whole lot of them sold. This old scraper looks like it's got some really good bones. It should clean up just fine. It has a patent date of 41105. And just behind the knob it's marked Stanley number 85. If you're looking for a user, this isn't it. This is a collector plane. The number 12 and the number 112 are a lot better scraper. They have an adjustable angle on the iron. This one's fixed. Let's break it down. And there's a look at it all broke down. Overall looks pretty good. There is some minor japanning loss. We'll address that when we get to it. You notice that the uh, tote has a curved bottom so it fits right there and the same thing with the knob so replacing these is not an easy thing to do when they're broke inside the base there's a uh, piece of metal that's threaded right there that you can see the threads on the tote same thing for the knob uh, that's what the bolt screws into I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out and there's what it looks like when they're popped out they just slid right out the back you can see there's a little bit of rust on them. I have done the number 85s so they don't come out as easy as what this one did. And I also want to point out that the frog does have that little set screw right there. It goes in the hole right in front of it. And I haven't read about it, but clearly it's used to slightly adjust the angle, which uh, I don't think I would ever do that. The cast iron material that this thing's made out of, any kind of torque on it at all is going to make that thing crack right across the bottom of your frog. Frog has a nice machine flat bottom that fits perfectly on the base of the plane. Next thing I want to do is take the frog in the bottom, hot water in my deep sink, simple green and a scrub brush. Clean it up, see exactly what this japanning looks like. With the scrubbing done we can see that the japanning looks pretty good. Uh, the bottom doesn't have any appreciable loss a little bit where the knob and the tote had been slipping back and forth on it you can see right there nothing to worry about the frog on the, the front edges has some japanning loss not a whole lot on the lever cap back side of the frog looks good back side of the lever cap looks like it was originally japanned and then uh, I would only assume that sliding that iron in and out a few times must have uh, worn the japanning off. I do want to point out that the knob and tote bolt and nuts are different than what the normal planes are. Those nuts are, are not brass. They're nickel plated and they're screwed on there in a way that they're really not meant to take off. If you take them off then when they go into the plane body itself to tighten up they'll be moving and you don't want that to happen. Before I finish cleaning up the base frog and lever cap I'm going to start the tote knob. I'm going to use a uh, worn out sanding sponge and some 3 out steel wool clean up the japanning and see what it looks like. First is the sanding sponge. I'm going to go over the uh, tote knob bolt kind of lightly removing anything that's loose and just kind of overall clean it up to see how it's going to look. So after using the sand and sponge it's onto my 3 aught steel wool and if there's any lacquer left on you'll see it's starting to uh, even out and shine up. Simple process just like this over the whole thing. Most of the original lacquer was still on the totem knob but I'm going to enhance them a little bit. I'm going to take some Midwax Rosewood Gel Stain and go over the entire thing, both the tote and the knob. Wherever there's little dings, the gel stain gets down in there and uh, colors them back in. 
you're going to make it match up a lot better when it's done. I wipe the gel stain on and I immediately wipe it off. So they look pretty good with the gel, sto gel stain applied. Next thing I'm going to do is give them a coat of lacquer. To apply the lacquer, stick a pencil in the hole in the bottom of your tote knob and light coats. If you got an old board with a couple holes drilled in it after you're done applying the lacquer, just stick them in there and let them dry. While the lacquer dries, I'm going to take my razor knife with a burr on it and I'm going to clean up the rust off of the flat machine surfaces. I'm going to try to leave the patina on and see how it looks. This type of scraping is a very effective way to remove the surface rust. It doesn't require any chemicals, no sandblasting, no sandpaper and it allows you to retain some of the patina. If you have to uh, flip your blade over, it, it dulls up, you know, after a little bit. Keep it at an at angle like what I'm holding right here. In a little bit of practice, you find out you won't get any scratches. Having a good burr is the key. Kind of like magic. So the scraping does a fine job. It's looking good already. I did the same thing on the iron. The next thing I'm going to do is take a worn out piece of 150 grit. And I'm going to try to even up the patina on the flat metal surfaces. This is gentle. Always with the grain. You can see the original machine marks. Applying more pressure where pressure is needed to even it out. All a matter of personal preference. If you've got an old Stanley number four or number five that's not a valuable collector plane, you could lap this down and make it look like new. So after the 150 is done, I'm moving on to some 3000 grit. Again, I'm not rubbing hard. This is just going to polish it up. Give it a nice sheen and get it ready for a coat of wax. With the 3000 done, I've still got uh, some staining and darkness to the metal. It doesn't look shiny new. You can still see the original uh, machining marks. There you can see a little bit of staining on the bottom. Looks a lot better than what it did. Next is a rolled up piece of 150 to get into this throat cutout right here. 150 on a piece of wood to, to get into the this part of the throat and 150 on the sand block to do around the edges. With all the machine surfaces cleaned up on the bottom, I'm going to take some steel wool now over top of all the Japan surfaces. It's going to be real light. I want to remove the, the rust that's on these leading edges right here. And that's about it. What I'm going to do now is use my oil pens. I'm going to touch up the leading edges around the edge of the frog right here where there's some japanning loss a couple little spots on the inside of the bottom and a couple tiny little spots here on the lever cap I do this primarily just to seal the edges of where the japanning is broke off with the hope that it will help present or prevent any future loss of the japanning I look at this as more of a preservation step than I do restoration Lots of progress made. Two coats of my uh, touch-up paint has been applied to the frog and lever cap and then I lightly steel wooled it. Three coats of lacquer to the tote and knob, followed by the worn-out sanding sponge, three-aught steel wool, and then buffed them up with a blue shop paper towel. I also took the iron, cleaned it up, used my Stanley Sweetheart number 176 burring tool to put a burr on it. So the next thing I want to do is coat these black Japan and machine parts with my dirty oil. There's what I use and there's my dirty oil rag. I wipe the dirty oil into every nook and cranny. If you 
begins to uh, give it a, a nice finished look on the japanning. Helps prevent rust. Well worth the effort. And just like Savoir Fair, my dirty oil is everywhere. You want to use a Q-tip and get into all those holes, nooks and crannies where you can't get it with the rag. And leave that on there for as long as I can until it's time to start putting it back together and I'm going to wipe it off. The only thing left to do is to clean up the small parts. First step in that is I get a piece of uh, 150 grit paper, fold it to fit the screw slots, that and a dental pick clean out the screw slots. After the screw slots have been cleaned, it's onto a fine wire wheel. Well, those small parts are looking a lot better. It's time to give them a coat of oil. And while I let them sit with the oil applied, I'm going to move back on to the uh, Japan parts and wipe the dirty oil off of those. The final step before putting this old 85 back together is to give it a coat of wax. Wax applied and wax off. Parts are all there, looking really good, ready to go back together. One final look at them all before this old beauty gets assembled. There you have it, a flat out beautiful old scraper plane. Look at that. It turned out really nice. We get to take a look at this old beauty from all angles. There's a look at her with the tote and knob tilted to the right. And the tote and knob are tilted to the left. And there's a good look at the bottom. It's nice that it's got some darkness from the original patina on the bottom and the sides. The only thing left to do is take this old plane for a test drive. For this test I've got a poplar raised panel door, door panel. Not as impressive as what it is when you're doing shavings. But if you look real close up here you can see the, the results. You can hear the scraper doing its work. Take a quick look at what the results are. So basically it's piled up some dust at the end of the panel. And it looks like it has significantly smoothed up that panel. It's kind of hard to tell by the video, but when you rub your hand over this thing, you can definitely feel the difference. It smoothed it up really nice. It's not a plane I'd recommend buying as a user, but if you've got the money, it could be. So there you have it, another beautiful old plane captured in the video record book. This number 85 is going to go on eBay in the month of August. If you want one, there it is. I enjoyed doing this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something. Time for supper. Bye.